We continue our week-long focus on relationships, and today we're talking about what happens when relationships become toxic. And Tina Malinowski is here from Rosebrook Center, and she's Director of Residential Services. Welcome, and thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, so many people know about the great work that Rosebrooks is doing. Tell us, you're a domestic shelter, but you do mm -hmm. much more. We do. Um, in addition to having a shelter, we also provide support and services in the community and non-residential non services, so people can come and receive support group, um, counseling, individual counseling. This includes adults and children. We're also co-located in hospitals, in court systems, with law enforcement, and we have transitional housing as well. And so I didn't know you were in actual, you have a little, like, a little area in a courthouse. We as do. Well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. In that's really great. In municipal court, in order protection court, and we're also in schools. So convenient, for sure. Yeah, we want to interface where um, people who are experiencing, experiencing abuse mm -hmm. are going to end up. So we want to talk about what happens when relationships become toxic. And so that's just your specialty. What are some of the things that we need to know about signs? One thing you really, when we talked earlier, was you said it's, it's not the woman's fault. Certainly not. The onus of the responsibility is on the, pers the person who's actually um, attempting to control um, the, their partner. And so we often get overly focused on the purpose, the person who's being victimized, mm -hmm. uh, when in fact it's the person who's doing the perpetrating that we need to focus on. And so many times you said women think, what did I do wrong? What am mm -hmm. I not seeing? What didn't I know? But you said it's very subtle and starts slowly. It, so yeah, tell us how this happens and how we can recognize it once we see it beginning to happen. I think you have to really pay attention to your gut, your instincts, what are they telling you? If something feels off about the relationship, um, really, really pay attention to that. Talk with your family and your friends, um, your support system. Ask them how do they see things? What is their perspective on, on mm -hmm. your relationship? Um, and when you're, in, um, when you're in a relationship with someone, Who's being, who's being abusive to you, mm -hmm. you don't often know what's going on at first um, because that person can be completely charming, uh, not display any abusive or controlling behaviors initially, and, and it can be very confusing. All right, you sent us a quick list of different I tips that, that we need to know. What are those? What are, tell me what they are and what's important for us to recognize and what we should do. Well, I... It, if you are someone who knows someone who's being abused, and I think it's really important that you recognize whenever someone is retreating uh, further and further away from, from you as a family, um, whether or not the person that you care about isn't acting the mm -hmm. same, whether or not they're taking responsibility for the problems in the relationship, um, if they're afraid of their partner, seem eager to please yeah. them. Yeah. Now we have a phone number that we want people to know. It's the hotline number. Tell us that number. Um, the Metropolitan Wide Hotline number is 816 Hotline. And all six domestic violence agencies within our community share that hotline. So 816 Hotline will get you to any of the shelters. All right, thank you for coming and sharing mm -hmm. that information, empowering women in relationships. And we've got that hotline number on our, on our website as well. And of course, you can go to rosebrooks.com. Yeah, thank all you. Right. Thank you, Tina.